Everybody in the dad is doing it, so let's get down to business. Video games have been popular for a super long time, but the act of collecting them is more popular now than ever. I figured I would take a few minutes here to weigh into the conversation and share 10 of my reasons why I collect video games. Ooh. The first thing I really like about collecting video games, especially retro ones, is the kind of sense of exploration and discovery that's associated with that. I think there really is something to be said for the thrill of the hunt and the fact that you can go out to a yard sale or a flea market and you really just don't know what you're gonna find. You're most likely gonna find a stack of nothing, but you never know, you could find some awesome Super Nintendo games. There really is something to be said for the thrill of the hunt, and going on a road trip, or even just getting out into your own city or town, you really can find some pretty awesome nothing. Another part of collecting video games I really like is the educational aspect. As you pursue and gather more games, you're inevitably gonna learn more about them. You're gonna learn more about the systems that they originated on, you're going to talk to people online and in person about your experiences with those games and learn tricks of the trade, so to speak, that you simply wouldn't have found otherwise. Video game preservation and the knowledge that's required of that endeavor are pretty awesome pursuits and it really does take time and a genuine interest in the time periods and the business decisions associated with this medium to find what you're looking for and also to help the hobby grow. The next one kind of goes hand in hand with that education thing because as I mentioned, you're gonna wind up talking to people who are also interested in video games and the collection of them. So you're gonna socialize with people. You're gonna find talking points. You're gonna engage with and even potentially build a community of your own. So that's something I really like because on a personal level, I certainly can be a pretty sociable person, but I definitely can clam up and really do have an introverted side. So it's nice to be able to speak to people who share this interest, just like with any other hobby and to kind of nerd out for a little while talking about these pieces of plastic that we like. <laughs> Collecting video games has also been a nice motivator for me to declutter my house. Take a look at this, for example. This is a big log that was on my desk. Let's get rid of it right now. Okay. Another aspect of collecting video games that I personally believe heavily in is that hobbies are healthy. One of my favorite quotes is that boredom is counter-revolutionary. And speaking anecdotally on that one, when I first moved to St. Louis, I was bored for quite a while. I didn't know anybody because I had just moved to this city. And it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to spend my time other than just watching movies, playing games, playing guitar. But I needed something new, something to kind of place a foothold in St. Louis and make me feel a little bit more at home. Since I started collecting in earnest, I've felt a lot happier. It's given me collecting goals. And perhaps most of all, it led me into this next benefit that I'm gonna discuss and that was it led me to get into YouTube. When I first started on YouTube back in the spring of 2014, I didn't necessarily have a goal for this channel. I just really wanted to kind of share my enthusiasm for this newfound hobby that I had and to document the games that I was picking up each month. Getting into YouTube because of my video game collecting has led to a secondary healthy hobby. If for nothing else, I'm really happy that I started collecting games so that I could get into the YouTube world because it's been really fun been really fulfilling in terms of meeting new people, learning new editing techniques. So both the community aspect as well as the creation element of getting into YouTube over the past two and a half years or so has been one of my favorite parts of collecting games. As I mentioned in the last reason why I collect video games, developing a better sense of time management has been a really helpful thing both personally and professionally in the workplace. So I really think it helps to know what you want to prioritize because Let's face it, actions reflect priorities. And having a YouTube channel has helped me balance the time that I need to spend writing and making videos and collecting video games in the first place so that I have other video ideas to cover, as well as to balance my personal relationships and my workload in my professional life. In a perfect world, I'd be able to put out more than one video per week or more than one video per two or three weeks in some cases where I'm slacking. But at the very least, I'm really a fan of being able to plan out the video ideas that I want to cover 
and try to figure out how I'm going to fit them into my routine over the course of a month or so. It's exciting because I absolutely love having stuff to look forward to and putting out videos is one of the best feelings I've ever had as a creative person. If you're someone like me who likes to share ideas and laugh and make other people smile, then hitting that upload button is one of the best feelings in the world. So being able to look forward to that every week is phenomenal. Although I don't have any impressive comparisons and charts and things like that to show you guys, I can pretty confidently attest that despite how expensive some games can be, I know, believe me, especially in the retro world, the hobby of video game collecting is not as expensive as many other hobbies. <gasps> I know, because we're entrenched in this world, sometimes it feels that way. But believe me, if you were a golfer or a hobbyist photographer or possibly even a cyclist or a hardcore fisherman, you're probably going to be spending even more money because there's really expensive equipment with a lot of other hobbies that people engage in. Not necessarily just the equipment either, it could be travel costs and service fees and things like that. Playing video games is largely a passive and obviously an entertainment related hobby. So many of the games of course that we buy, especially for those of us who are really thrifty, are pretty inexpensive. Comparatively speaking, $60 for a brand new video game these days is actually much less than games used to cost back in the 90s and the 80s in terms of inflation and things like that. The ninth reason I'm gonna present to you guys, I kind of alluded to in a previous reason, but believe it or not, and this one may sound a little strange to some of you guys, the hobby of video game collecting has actually increased my interest in other hobbies. Let me explain. This reason actually kind of ties together two or even three of the reasons I've presented before because I'm a person who loves to travel. I haven't always necessarily, or I haven't at least always admitted to myself how much I like to travel. As I've gotten older, however, I've come to really appreciate the rides to and from, so to speak, whether it be in a car or an airplane. Another interest of mine that I've had since gosh, as long as I can remember, is videography and making stupid movies. <laughs> it's something that I really enjoyed doing with my siblings and with some of my friends when we were young. And I spent some time in high school and college making short movies just for fun and sometimes for class projects and things like that. But it wasn't until I got back into retro video games and the act of collecting them that I started up this YouTube thing and got back into editing and some of these other interests that have lain dormant, so to speak, in my refrigerator of interests. Devoting time to collecting video games is fun. It's fun to get online on websites like Craigslist and eBay and Facebook and try to make deals with people. But when I step back and look at my interest in video games in a more focused way, it helps me realize that I do want to spend time with some of these other hobbies that I have. So I really am grateful to it for that because it kind of helps me put things into perspective and helps me to once again balance my time. The last reason that I want to mention to you guys is that collecting video games and playing them helps me stay young. All my life I've looked at people that, in my opinion, try to grow up too fast. And I look at them and I wonder why they're in such a hurry to rush through their life and certain irreplaceable parts of it. I remember seeing people in my high school just champing at the bit to get into college and then get out of college as fast as they could so they could get to work. And I always kind of question that because to me, there's so much that you can learn within whatever point of life you're in right now that you can then apply to what you want to do later. So anytime I can remember to take a step back and look at myself and realize that I'm personally taking things too seriously, because that definitely happens, it's nice to be able to fall back on the things that I love, the things that make me laugh and make me smile, video games being one of those primary things. This helps me realize that the reason I'm experiencing those emotions is because there's a kid inside me who's attaching those positive experiences to whatever game I'm playing at that time, and in a way kind of reliving that sense of wonderment that you get when you first play a game that you've never played before. Anyway guys, those are my 10 reasons why I love collecting video games. I would love to know what yours are. If you share some of these or if you have completely different ones, let me know in the comments. And if this is your first cross chop video and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. My name is Chris and thanks so much for watching and as always, play heavy.